How's it going everyone? This video is gonna be more of a code walkthrough. Um, I added a feature to this icon generator AI.com project that I've been working on. And basically I just wanted a way for people to add in community feedback. If someone's using this application, they have like an idea or a feature that they want. I figured lowering the barrier of entry of like giving feedback would probably be a good thing to do. Um, it's usually e easier if the feedback option is directly integrated in your app than to tell people to go and like tweet at me or to send me an email directly. So if you go to feedback here, there is community feedback and you can go here and you can actually add in some suggestions. Some people just kind of put little messages here. Um, some people say, you know, the, the image quality is bad, stuff like that. Some of these were by me and I was just kind of testing the waters to see if people upvote these. And what you can actually do is you can come to any of these features and click on the heart and it's going to mark that as upvoted and it's going to resort this page for you based on what you voted on, right? So if I were to undo that one, it'll unsort and go back down here. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through how I did that. Let me just spin up my project. I don't think I have it running locally right now. Um, and then also run my next app over here. Like I kind of talked about in my live streams and other videos, I like to Dockerize as much as I can for my project. So I have a Docker file that basically spins up a local S3 bucket. It spins up Prisma Studio. It spins up a post or MySQL database so that if I were to switch from one project to the next, I can just run a Docker Compose and basically hit the ground running. All right, so at this point, I think it's all running, hopefully. Let's just go to localhost 3000 and let's see. Okay, seems good. Now you do have to sign in for this to work. All right, so I have it all running locally um, and I'm on the feedback page. Let me just walk you through the JSX for the page. Again, I'm still using the, the pages directory next, which I think it's fine to use. I know the app router is now stable, but I think people have still run into issues with it and they don't really like it as much. Some people really like it. I, at some point I will switch over to the app router. I'm just not willing to invest all that time refactoring my code for something that is probably not gonna give me that much benefit at this point in time. But let's look at this code. So I have a feedback page and it's, you know, it's not too complicated, but it has some logic basically. Um, when this page first loads, I'm doing a request to get all the feedback and that is using a TRPC query endpoint. So let's just go ahead and find, if I go to my routes, I have like a feedback one. I added a couple of mutations and queries for basically allowing users to get the feedback and submit a new feedback and vote on feedback. Okay. So the first thing that runs, if I go back to this thing, get all feedback, use query. So that is a query, which is going to hit my backend. And if we look here, it basically is a public endpoint that anyone can hit. It does a context Prisma feedback find many, and it just includes all of the, the votes that are associated with it, right? So when this comes back from the back end, we'll have a list of all the feedback. And additionally, we'll have every single vote that's associated with that feedback. Right now, we don't have any feedback, so I can't really show that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new item and I'll walk you through the, uh, the mutations and how that's all working. So going back to the front end, um, how do we leave new feedback, right? So I have a feedback mutation here and down here on the form itself, when we submit the form, we basically prevent the form from submitting. We submit the feedback to the back end. When it's done, we will refresh the page and grab all the new feedback items. And then we just kind of clear out any items. Yeah, sorry, clear out any errors or uh, clear out the, the input box. Okay? So this is what I'm going to demo right now. I'm going to go to the UI and I'm going to type in a word like hello world. Click submit and that is going to make a mutation request to the back end and do this other stuff. So I'll just go ahead and say hello world. Click submit and that is going to hit my mutation on TRPC. So if I go over to my mutation here, I have a mutation here called leave feedback. And that takes an input of the feedback input, so it's a string with a max of 255 characters. And when that endpoint gets invoked, I basically get the user who tried to invoke that endpoint by grabbing that from the context. I create a new feedback entry doing this. So prisma.feedback.create, I pass in the data and the user ID, and then I just return that feedback. Okay. So that's what's basically storing it into the database. And again, as I showed you in the UI, after that feedback is successfully stored, which is gonna happen here, it does a refetch to get back the item. Now I could probably do some optimistic updates to make this cleaner in the UI, but I mean, this works for the most part. 
So let's also talk about how does voting work, right? So I have this little heart icon here and I need to know, first of all, like, did I myself vote on this? So actually I'm going to scroll up to the top of this file and when this component first mounts, what it's actually going to do is it's going to get all of my votes. Okay. So right here I'm saying API feedback, get user votes. And that fetches a collection and tells me all the things that I have voted for. Okay. So I think if I just search the, the query here, we can see that get user votes is being called in one of these, which I believe is this one. Um, notice that there are no votes here, which makes sense because I haven't voted on it. But let's just go ahead and click on the heart. And that's going to do two things. The first thing it's going to do is if we find the heart, which I think is down here, when we click on the heart, we have a click listener that basically says all a vote mutation and that send back the ID of the the feedback entry I'm trying to vote on, right? So this is going to tell the backend that, hey, I just voted on this or I unvoted on it. And then it tells it to refetch all the feedback from the backend and then also refetch all the, the uh, votes. This is not the most performant way. There's again, there's probably ways I could kind of fix this up, but this is the quickest thing that I could implement. And sometimes doing the quickest thing and just getting the feature out there is actually worth more than like trying to make this super performant. Because as you saw, there's only like eight pieces of feedback on this page. So people aren't really going to this page and using it. So putting in a bunch of effort of making this like super performant and optimistic updates and all this stuff, like not worth the effort in my opinion. So let's go to this vote mutation. I didn't really show that. That is brought in up here as another method we can call. And if I go to my router here, I have a vote um, endpoint here. Okay, so this is what's getting called when you click on the heart. It's either gonna vote for it or unvote it. Okay, so based on the ID that you send in, it's gonna get your user ID, and then it's going to create a vote based on your user ID and the feedback that you provided. And the first thing we do is we basically find, is there already a vote in the system that correlates that user ID with that feedback entry? And if there is, and so down here you can see if, if vote length is greater than zero, we are gonna go ahead and delete the existing vote. Otherwise we create a new vote. Um, I didn't really show you the Prisma schema, so I should probably do that. I added a feedback model, okay? So there's a model called feedback and there's a model called vote. And also on the user, a user can have multiple votes, I think. So here we see that a user has multiple votes. They can also add multiple feedback. So if I ever wanted to go into the system and delete a user, that would also clear out all the feedback that they've given us. But that is kind of how I have it all related together. Um, a vote can belong to a feedback. A feedback can have multiple votes. And we use these relationships to kind of like keep track of who's voting and stuff. This is like the same thing that you kind of do with like a Reddit upvote, downvote thing. Um, I just did it with hearts. Okay, so every time I click that, it's going to call this endpoint to either vote on it or unvote it. And then as I mentioned in the front end, when we call this vote mutation, that actually refetches all of the feedback because again, the counts would have been incremented and decremented based on like what vote you voted on. And then we also refetch all of your votes so that we can change this button from either a highlighted teal or a non-highlighted teal. Okay, so if, as you click on it, it's either gonna un-engage it or engage it. I think the last thing I'll kind of show is like, again, I just have like a, a computed variable here where I'm just sorting the feedback based on the vote counts. So sort by the votes by descending order. You can just kind of do this with a sort function. Nothing too groundbreaking there. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, I mean, this, this code is like private. It's like part of my own um, repo. So I'm not gonna like host this anywhere, at least not yet. Maybe at some point I will make my project public, but I just wanted to kind of share that with you if you guys are kind of curious and like learning more about how to make like a vote, voting system or like upvote feedback system. I think the most important thing to understand is like the models, how like these correlate with each other. And once you have this set up, it's pretty easy to kind of like create the endpoints that kind of do what you need to do with the feedback. Now, I think the one thing that I need to add into this um, right now, when people leave feedback on the app, sometimes there's just like stuff I need to delete. For example, like this one. Cool. Like I appreciate the messages, but like I'm looking for like solid feedback, right? Ability to delete account. That's like solid feedback that I need to add away for people to delete their account. So I'm actually going to upvote that one because that's actually kind of important. And I think it actually might be required in a lot of countries if people want to delete their account. So I need to figure out like 
where I add in maybe an account button here and then you can click on it. It goes to settings, stuff like that. I'll add it to the radar of like things I need to work on. But other than that, I mean like right now I have to manually go into SQL and delete these things from from Planet Scale, which not the best user experience for me as a maintainer of this app. But again, like the effort of adding that in is it really worth adding a special way for like checking if I'm logged in as my my web dev Cody. They give myself a special way to like see a delete button and like validate that on the back end and stuff. It's just a lot of extra work where I could just log into Planet Scale, find these, and delete them by ID. So yeah, if you want to leave some feedback that you can think of, if you ever logged into this application and created something, uh, I'm always open for feedback, and this is a great place to put it. Um, other than that, yeah, I hope this video is cool. Give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And like always, I have a Discord channel. You're welcome to join if you just want to find a place to ask questions or just talk to some other developers if you're stuck. Other than that, have a good day. Happy coding.